Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Blue Spring, a Japanese drama from 2001 that was directed by Toshiaki Toyoda. Now I recently reviewed Toyoda's film Tokyo Rampage on my channel, which is an interesting movie. So I decided to review a few more of this man's films, at least the ones that are readily available. So here are my thoughts on Blue Spring. Now, soon after being named the new leader of his high school's gang, Kujo, played by Ryohei Matsuda, grows bored with the violence and hatred that surrounds him. He wants desperately to abandon his post as the leader of this gang, but his once enviable position of power has a strange way of making him feel powerless. So this film begins with a memorable dare scene where the gang members are on a rooftop of the school and they risk falling to their deaths by standing on the outside of the protective railing. So they, they stand on the outside of this railing and they're looking down at the, at the ground, which is like you know 50 feet below them or something like that. And they let go of the railing and clap a few times and then try to grab the railing again before they fall. So you'll have a competition between these guys who line up on the outside of this railing. So this is a pretty risky game and it's pretty suspenseful to watch because anyone could fall and die at any time. Uh, the purpose of this game primarily is a challenge of authority within the gang. So if you're a, mar a, a member of this gang and you feel like you should be the leader... Well, let, let's go and, and play the dare game and see if you got the guts to do it. You know what I mean? If you win the game and the other guy backs out or something, he's like, I can't do this anymore, then, then you're the leader. So after that rather striking opening sequence, we get some good music to jam to while a uh, slow motion uh, visual of the school and characters set us up. This is an energetic opening that definitely gets the viewers blood pumping. And then after that, you know, very early on in the film, we already see the disillusionment of our main character who gets insulted by some juniors at the school. So this is the gang leader getting insulted by some juniors, and he doesn't even bother to beat him up or teach him a lesson. He's just, he's just sick of it all. <laughs> you know what I mean? So the gang after that kind of hangs out at school, and they visit different rooms and areas, but of course, some of their fellow uh, classmates cause problems. So that's kind of how the film flows. Blue Spring has a very, I guess, free-flowing story structure to it. It's rather simplistic in that regard. You know, there's less emphasis on plotting and more emphasis on character interaction and themes. So like some of Toyota's other impressive films, it is sometimes difficult to explain exactly why the characters work as well as they do. And the reason for this is that you know, the way he develops them is a little bit unorthodox. So, for example, you know, there's one character whose dream in life is to make it to the national baseball game. And there's a scene with him where he talks to a Yakuza right outside the school and walks towards his car. The sequence itself is rather short-lived, but the director is able to infuse a certain dramaticism and emotion to it, even, even with a scene like that short. Another example is a scene that takes place in a bathroom stall. One of these high schoolers is lecturing another guy at the school regarding the leadership of the gang. Again, a fairly short scene, but it has an impact to it. So I think one of Toyota's best talents as a director is how he efficiently earns character development whenever he can within the shortest possible time. So you might have a side character who doesn't really get much screen time, but they still make an impression on the viewer because of the talents of this director to kind of communicate uh, the dramatic impact of what they're doing and their character traits. So this guy's good. Of course, we do spend a lot of time with the two lead characters, Ryohei Matsuda's character and his friend, both of whom basically communicate the aimlessness of youth and the craving for power, which are two of the, you know, two of the big themes of this film. I would say that in general, Blue Spring has a bit more depth than Toyota's previous film, Tokyo Rampage, while at the same time maintaining that energetic, entertaining style. Although I really do like Tokyo Rampage quite a bit, but I would say that Blue Spring has a little bit more dramatic depth to it, I would say. Now, creating memorable moments is a hallmark for this director, 
There's one scene, you know, no spoilers here, but there's one scene where a girl is waiting outside of the front gate of the school while two guys are talking and smoking in the bathroom. And it's like simultaneously dramatic and blackly humorous at the same time as it cuts between both locations. There's also a, uh, a time lapse scene on the roof that's pretty cool. And I'm still not sure how, how they did it. You know, did, did they make that actor stand on the roof all night while the time-lapse camera was going? I wonder that, because I can't figure out how they did it otherwise. <laughs> if I was ever interviewing this director, that would be a question I would ask. Like, did you make that guy stand up on that roof all night? Uh, I wonder. And then there's, this, and there's a similar scene to Tokyo Rampage regarding a, a knife stabbing that's quite memorable in Blue Spring as well. Now, it's not nearly as awesome as the knife stabbing in Tokyo Rampage, but it is pretty interesting. So, just a few examples. There's a lot of memorable, uh, memorable moments in this film. The school location has a lot of graffiti on the inside walls, and it looks kind of like an old building. Uh, I bet you... I bet you this was like an abandoned school that they filmed in and they sprayed a, b a bunch of graffiti on the interior walls. That would be my guess. Very limited locations on display in this film, but there are some nice shots with some wide shots like of the building and uh, the surrounding uh, town, as well as some cherry blossom trees that are on the premises. The soundtrack is good stuff. I mentioned it earlier. If you like punk rock, you will be pleased. There is no J-pop in this film, um, uh, in this film at all. So fans of the heavier stuff will will enjoy the tunes in this. This has got some good stuff in it, and it makes sense to use this kind of music when you're exploring these kinds of characters. Runtime is 83 minutes. Nice, flies right by. I definitely recommend Blue Spring, and it provides a nice starting point for anyone who is interested in exploring Toshiaki Toyota's filmography. This is good. It's currently available on Region 1 DVD with English subtitles. And as always, we'll see you next time.